What's up, everybody, and welcome back. It is Friday, December 21st, and uh, every Friday, or, or roughly at the end of every week, we do a wrap-up of the tech news of the week, uh, a large focus on Microsoft and everything else that is happening in the world. And so let's just dive right in, and then we will get to the questions that you guys all submitted this week, which there are quite a few good ones. Uh, the first thing up on the agenda is Microsoft released a new Office app. It's not anything crazy. It's literally just an office like web wrapper looking thing that it makes it easier to jump between applications and find your content. If you're familiar with going to office.com, uh, it's pretty much that. Um, considering that this is the week before Christmas, it was actually a pretty busy week for Microsoft. They announced a really big feature for coming to Windows 10 Pro and Enterprise called Sandbox. And it's kind of exactly what it sounds like. It's officially called Windows Sandbox, and it's a lightweight desktop environment for running untrusted apps and it's exactly what it sounds like. So if you go to sketchyapps.com and download your favorite uh, virus and you're afraid of running it on your machine, you can throw up a sandbox environment, run it in there, and if it detonates and, and tries to destroy your system, you can just collapse it back down and it's just all nice and contained within that environment. And if it's a fine app, then you can run it in your production environment and be just fine. Uh, they, they announced this this week, actually accidentally with a little early blog post, but it's a pretty cool feature, and I think something a lot of people are going to really like. And so look forward to that. Uh, it's in the latest Insider Fast Ring build, but it should ship in 19H1 that is coming, uh, should be around the March-ish timeline. Uh, if you use OneNote with Windows 10, it now supports custom tags, or at least it will. In 2019, Microsoft will be rolling out that feature soon. It's taken them a good long time to get that av available, but here we are, and at least it's finally coming. Uh, Microsoft also announced Games with Gold for January. There's a couple notable additions in here. Uh, you got World Rally Championship 6, uh, Laura Croft, uh, Guardian of the Light, and there's also Far Cry 2, which for Far Cry fans, that's actually a pretty big deal. And so look for those coming. Uh, the other thing on the Xbox side is Microsoft is ending Xbox All Access subscription service December 31st. Now, if you're not familiar with what this is, All Access allows you to get a bundle of um, Xbox hardware and services for one mo, one mo, one low monthly payment for roughly 24 months, I believe is what it would be paid over. And they're ending that program. <clears throat> now, there's a, there's a couple of interesting things to note. One, Microsoft says, hey, this is coming back in 2019, which basically sounds like maybe they're retooling it a bit or maybe changing things up. Uh, I know they're using Dell Financial Services right now to actually finance all this. And so maybe they're changing things on that end. Maybe they're looking at changing it up with some of the Xbox Maverick stuff that's coming out. That's the diskless version of the Xbox One S console. I don't quite know, uh, but it is going away. So if you were looking at doing that, you've got about eight days left to get that order in. Otherwise, you're going to be waiting until an unknown date in 2019 when Microsoft will return the service. Um, other things announced this week, uh, Cortana can now read your email to you. If you've ever said, hey, Cortana, please read my email, it can now do so. And it actually does it in a pretty nice way. It's not just a robotic voice just reading word after word. It sounds pretty natural, if you will. And some other news on the Cortana side, and it's not as good, if you will, is that um, there was a, a study done by Loop Ventures where they asked 800 queries to Google's, uh, to the Google Assistant, to, to Amazon's thing, which I can't say otherwise my office blew up, Cortana and Siri. And of the 800 queries, Google uh, answered 87.9% correctly. Uh, Siri came in second at 74.6. Amazon came in and third at 72.5. And Cortana came in last at 63.4%. Yikes. Um, I know some people are going to refute that, but the, you know this is their baseline study of 800 queries, and so you can take the uh, complaints up with them, but clearly it's, that's really far behind, especially for how much Microsoft inve has invested in natural voice recognition, which is typically pretty good, but um, you know that's, that's their result. I don't know if they have uh, some sort of chip on their shoulder or whatever. But yeah, and then the other thing this week, if you've been holding out for a keyboard and mouse for your Xbox One, Razer now has a $249.99 option, which seems absurd for a keyboard and mouse specifically for the Xbox One, but clearly Razer likes to do a little bit of markup. They're typically a premium, uh, more, more premium-ish brand, and if that's your thing, you can go buy that now with all of your dollars and be very happy that you have keyboard and mouse for the games that support it on the Xbox One. All right, diving into the questions this week, which is always my favorite part of the week. Uh, 
Da, 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 da. Let's start it off here. Refresh the page. Brother Nod says, any rumors of Microsoft rolling out Office 365 and the modern Outlook app to the Xbox One now that there's keyboard and mouse support? No. Um, I think that I think that would go... I think Phil Spencer would probably have a small aneurysm if they were rolling out Office stuff to the Xbox, just because in the marketing sense, that would not go over very well. They've tried very hard to return the Xbox brand back to just a pure gaming and, and light entertainment device. And then to throw Office 365 on the Xbox console, I don't... I don't know why you would do that. I can't imagine trying to run Excel um, on the Xbox One would be a good experience, even with keyboard and mouse. Mr. PKI says, any thoughts if Windows Lite is related to server core or nano server in Azure? So this is an interesting thing. Um, I don't think so. My understanding is that Windows Lite is much closer to align to, say, a... A, uh, actually even Chrome, Chrome OS than even maybe Windows. Um, so we will see. There's still a lot unknown about Windows Lite. I'm still trying to dig around and get some more documentation on what it actually is under the hood. Um, but I can tell you that the UI is going to be very different than what you're accustomed to in Windows 10. It's also going to be completely marketed different as well, right? They're, they're going to pitch it as just kind of everyday activities and Windows 10 as a productivity OS. And so... Yeah, I, I don't quite know, candidly, uh, if it's related to server core or nano server in Azure. It's a good question, though. Uh, Refirt says, it's almost Christmas. Are you giving or receiving any tech gifts this year? I don't think I'm receiving any. I would be surprised. Um, the only thing I'm giving, which is a terrible gift, is I'm actually giving my father uh, the Amazon Echo Show that I have um, because I, I never use it. And that's that's the only tech stuff. And my wife usually doesn't buy me tech stuff just because it's probably for the best. But no, typically I try to avoid that because then you get then you get reeled in for um, <laughs> for customer support, and I really don't want to be doing that. Uh, Martinez V two says, since you're the expert in Surface, still reading your book at the moment, which you can find it beneath a surface.com. When do you expect the next Surface book will be? Will it still be? Will it? When do you expect the next Surface book? The next Surface book, I believe, is scheduled for late Q4 2019 if that deadline stays. So it's not going to be for a while. And will it still disconnect from the keyboard? Oof, this is a good question. So what he's asking is, this, hey, when is the next Surface book coming? Uh, per my understanding, it's late Q4 2019. Granted, all this with a grain of salt because timelines on hardware products change all the time. Uh, I believe they're reworking the hinge. So I don't, I don't know, like I, I don't, I haven't seen one at, seen one yet. And so I, I don't fully know, but is it good for casual gaming? Yeah, it is. I've done a couple of videos on it. Um, I'm trying to think mine's back there. That's my Surface Book 2. I need to write up a year long review because I've now been using it for more than a year, I believe. And um, yeah, so it's, it's fine for casual gaming. It's got a, a, a decent enough GPU in there that you should be fine for casual gaming. I, I wouldn't hold back on that. Uh, Zetrosky says, any exciting Surface products in the pipeline that we're not supposed to know about? Yeah. I mean, um, so in my book, uh, the last chapter, I put it as kind of a roadmap of a whole bunch of stuff. And I said, there's an ambient computing device coming in the spring. Now, I think that's still happening, but I know more about that ambient computing device now. And it's not maybe as exciting as you might think, but I still think it's pretty exciting um, that is Surface branded. And they're still working on it. I'm not ready to kind of dig out what that is yet. But yes, I, there's plenty of stuff. 2019 is going to be a fun year for hardware. Um, DCPSS asked a couple questions. Says, is Windows Sandbox related to WinCore OS, Win32 app, app virtualization and containerization? It might be. That's when I was struggling with the server core nano server stuff in Azure. I wasn't quite thinking it would be related to that, but I do think it might be related to app virtualization and containerization. Microsoft is working on containerizing all their apps. It's actually a part of WinCore. Um, it's also part of uh, GameCore as well. And if you're not familiar with GameCore, I did a video on it, a little bit on it earlier this week. And so GameCore and WinCore, I think, are much closer related to Windows Lite than, say, Nano Server and Azure, at least per my understanding at this time. Um, Next question is, will Chromium ever replace Edge HTML as the rendering engine of Windows 10 web view control in search, Cortana, and UWP apps? It would make sense. Now, it is not nearly as easy to just rip out that Edge 
HTML rendering engine from Windows 10 as it is saying, uh, just spinning up a new browser based on Chromium. So do I think it will happen? It wouldn't surprise me. It, it really wouldn't surprise me. They're going to be building out Chromium. That's what they're going to be supporting. I don't know why they would duplicate resources to extend support to Edge HTML. I would have to think that they will replace it here in the near future. But I don't believe that they have explicitly said that they are pulling it out on X date and replacing it at this time. And then is, is WinCore OS default Edge browser the exact same build for Windows 7 and Windows Eight, I, I believe so. I believe it's just going to be one browser, just different OS. So, yeah, uh, that wraps up for this week, guys. It's been a busy week. I mean, we've had Sandbox. We've had a bunch of different stuff going on. And as always, guys, this is just a wrap up and everything else. I've got some more stuff. Um, <laughs> I've gotten tons of questions about the Xbox stuff, uh, about what's going on there. Now, maybe I'll try to do another video on that that's a little bit more explicit and dives into that because I know that people are, are they've got a lot of questions. Uh, when, I mean, we've got Game Core, we've got two consoles, we've got the streaming stuff. It's a little confusing. Like, even myself, it's a little, it's a little tough to keep everything straight. People go ask a question about games, um, controllers, and everything else. And so I'd love to say that I just have all this documentation and that, you know, I call Phil Spencer up and he just tells me. But... I do have some additional information that we'll, uh, we'll be able to talk about here, hopefully in the near future. With that, guys, I hope you have a wonderful holiday, and we will catch you right back here next time on The Sam's Report. Catch you later.